only a few miles from Niagara Falls, one of the world's great natural wonders, is one of the wonders of the music world, the North Tonawanda, New York plant of the Rudolph Willetter Company. It is one of the largest, brightest, cleanest, most modern plants in American industry. Yet it bears a name famous in music for over 200 years. Way back in 1659, only 40 years after the Pilgrims landed here, Nicholas Willeter was a lute maker in Saxony. And historians tell us in 1700, Hans Autumn Willeter was awarded one of the Oscars of his day, the title of Master Violin Maker by the Saxon Guild. It was in 1853 when Rudolf Willeter came to America and in 1856, founded the Rudolph Willeter Company. Five years later, he was building pianos and selling drums and bugles to the armies in the Civil War. Next came the gay 90s, and they found Willeter selling the Regina Music Box with coin attachment. It was followed in 1899 with coin-operated pianos, and in succeeding years by orchestrians and automatic harps. In 1909, Willeter built its first piano for home use. It is now the world's largest manufacturer of pianos, all sold under one name. In 1910, Willeter built the first thousands of mighty Willeter pipe organs that thrilled millions of listeners all over the world. 22 years later, Willeter accordions were placed on the market. And one year after that, the first Willeter coin-operated phonograph was produced in the North Tonawanda plant. And finally, in 1945, Willeter announced the Willeter organ, a marvel of electronic science, hailed by organists and laymen alike as music's richest voice. With a colorful, tuneful history like that, it's no wonder that Willeter means music to millions. Nor is it any wonder that Willeter's long experience is reflected in instruments whose musical quality is as glorious and inspiring as this great cataract, located a scant few miles from the North Tonawanda plant. Let's look down on this vast Willeter plant, where thousands of skilled craftsmen turn wood, metal, and plastics into musical fun for everyone. And quite a plant it is, as you can see. Actually, it's nearly half a mile long. Occupies a site of 43 and a half acres. It's served by three railroad sidings. And incidentally, adjoining the site is a substantial acreage made available to employees free of charge for vegetable gardening every summer. Here, we are approaching the plant from the center drive. A far cry from the usual factory site green lawns, great hedges, and a profusion of flowers. Pretty hard to imagine anything but a quality product coming out of a plant like this. And now let's step into the plant and see just what does go into a new Willeter, whether a phonograph, a wall box, or a remote control speaker. First stop, a word of greeting from Willeter's Vice President and Plant Manager, Carl Johnson. Welcome to the Willeter Plant, home of the celebrated Willeter coin-operated phonograph or jukebox, as it is so fondly known throughout music-loving America. The first things that go into a Willeter are not wood, plastic, or metal. They are inspirations of men of skill men of long experience, of vision, the executive staff of Willitzer's North Tonawanda plant. Yes, these are the men whose combined judgment has consistently conceived the ultimate in coin-operated phonograph and auxiliary equipment. And how do they achieve this ultimate? Through inspirations and ideas, conferences and more conferences, brain sweat and blueprints, tearing up and doing over, days of it, weeks of it, months of it. For a new realtor must be right. 
and it will be right only when all concerned agree that this is it. Once the executive staff renders its decisions on the desired features of the new phonograph, from its styling to its construction, and from its tone to its price, engineering takes over. What was once only a gleam in someone's eye begins to have form and shape and beauty. Behind locked doors, the general styling and design of the phonograph is plotted by men who deal in eye appeal which is play appeal, which is one reason why realtors make more money for those who own and operate them. Over and over again, realtor designers have pioneered by introducing new materials and ideas into phonograph construction. There's a word that covers all this, and that word is leadership. Close by the design room, development engineers supervise the embryonic stages of the new instrument's engineering features as they first appear on drafting boards. These are the men whose know-how and can-do are basically responsible for mechanical quality and performance that have won Wurlitzer leadership by a margin seldom enjoyed in any industry by any single manufacturer. The first blueprints are ready for the metal model shop, where handmade models are produced to prove the efficiency of the mechanical components of the new phonograph. Simultaneously, the wood model shop receives blueprints of the cabinet from the designers. Skilled craftsmen construct a hand-built model of the case. And once the model shops have worked their magic, every component part is life tested to prove that it has been properly engineered. Simultaneously with these tests, the chemical laboratory technicians test every material that will make up this instrument for such things as shrinkage, color, tensile strength, durability, and every other desirable property that they should and must have. A quality product, did you say? Well, you can say that again, and still again, for that's the way Wurlitzer builds them. And now, the breathless moment. The new beauty makes its bow before the full executive staff. This is the Board of Review. Come on, you critics. Look at it. Listen to it. Probe into its innards. Is this newcomer fit to bear the will it's her name? The inspection is rigorous. These men are relentless. Does it get the nod? It does. It's ready for production. Full speed ahead, this machine spews out its blueprints. 300,000 square feet of them. 13 miles of them, 2,874 drawings, and 48 copies of each. Blueprints to the works manager. Blueprints to the assistant works manager. Blueprints to the chief inspector. Blueprints to the controller. Blueprints to the director of purchase. Blueprints to the chief test engineer. From the far corners of the continent come veneers and lumber to feed the gigantic needs of Willitzer's cabinet shops. Ten million feet of it a year. Every foot of it is the pick of Appalachian, Adirondack, and Canadian forests. All of it, the highest grade hardwood on the market. At Willitzer's own siding, carloads of veneer are unloaded and moved to storage. Lumber, too, is unloaded, stacked, and hauled. This used to be back-breaking work. Then somebody used his head 
instead of his back. And now it's all done mechanically. There are six huge dry kilns handling 200,000 feet of lumber at a time. Here comes a load that will go into one of these kilns. It will be dried and cured with temperature and humidity controlled from this panel to a fraction of a degree. No wonder Wurlitzer phonograph cabinets don't warp, buckle, or break out at the seams. They are really made right. Wurlitzer's woodworking department. You can scarcely see from one end to the other. But you can see that it is enormous. Believe me, a walk around this layout leaves you ready for a rest. It also leaves you thoroughly impressed that Wurlitzer knows its woodworking all the way from the forest primeval to the finished phonograph. At one end of this tremendous woodmill, thousands and thousands of boards are cut to rough length after leaving the dry kiln. Conveyor belts catch and carry away the waste wood. It's burned to generate steam and electric power used to run the plant. Clever? Say, these boys think of everything. Here's one for the book, too. A modern ultra-high-frequency gluing process. Does in 70 seconds what used to take four hours. These glued joints are as strong as the lumber itself. Wurlitzer makes its own plywood, too. There's a do-it-yourself-and-you'll-know-it's-done-right philosophy all through this plant. Wurlitzer veneers are the finest money can buy. Grain figurations are carefully matched to produce the rich appearance that characterizes all Wurlitzer cabinet work. Curving and shaping plywood is a skill in itself. Wurlitzer does it the modern way. Air is evacuated from rubber bags. Vacuum is created, and this vacuumatic pressure forces the plywood into shapes that will hold forever. All through this woodworking wonderland, you will find equipment that surpasses the efforts of the finest old European craftsmen. The skill of Wurlitzer workers is something to see, as they there's no sawdust in the air or underfoot. Every bit is sucked up by an air filtering and conditioning system. It's a clean plant, a healthful plant, a pleasant plant to work in. Here's a multiple spindle borer, drilling holes accurate to the thousandth of an inch. And here's a sander, laying the first foundation of a beautiful finish that helps give every Wurlitzer cabinet play-producing eye appeal. Good men must have good tools kept at a high pitch of perfection. Here's where it's done. The tool sharpening room. Machines almost human in their operation. Machines more than human in the accuracy they attain. Here, as everywhere, the work must be right. Did I say right? It better be. More than 250 inspectors are around to see that it is. These Hawkshaws are always on the watch for flaws. When they find one, out goes that part. Rejected. Scrapped. Junk in the interests of Wurlitzer quality. There's 
all this precision equipment and inspection pay off? You bet it does. And cabinet assembly proves it. Here you see the phonograph cabinet taking shape. Side assembly, top assembly, front assembly. No errors made along the line, or this cabinet would never have gone together as quickly or neatly as you see it being assembled here. Final inspection in the white. This time by a master craftsman. To him, there is no compromise with quality. Either it is, or it isn't. And it doesn't take him long to decide. Now ready for the first undercoating. It's sprayed on in a water wash booth. No noxious fumes. No danger of fire. No pain spared to protect both Wurlitzer workmen and Wurlitzer quality. Next, the second foundation is laid for the final cabinet finish. Believe it or not, here, worker skill and experience count more than on any previous operations we have pictured. Comes the final coat, each in turn applied by experts whose skill enables them to maintain an absolutely uniform film thickness. No pains are spared here or elsewhere to maintain Wurlitzer's high quality standards. Long lines of phonographs suspended on a monorail conveyor move through the finishing department. And here's an interesting feature. The fillers and lacquers are pumped from Wurlitzer's laboratory mixing vats through pipelines to the points where they are applied. Just one more step to assure uniform quality. Incidentally, all fillers and lacquers used in this plant are made to Wurlitzer formulas created by Wurlitzer chemists in Wurlitzer's own laboratories. All finishes must be cold resistant heat resistant, and withstand direct contact with liquids. Quite an order. Yet, it's an order that is filled by skilled Wurlitzer chemists. And now for a quick peek into the plastics department. Wurlitzer pioneered the use of plastics for decorative purposes. No one knows more about how to work them, shape them, form them, or use them, than Wurlitzer. And no single product has better capitalized on the eye arresting power of colorful plastics than has the Wurlitzer coin-operated phonograph. Here are the cabinets again, ready for a rubdown. First, by machine, and then by hand. To date, no amount of experimentation has produced a good substitute in this work for man's strong back and man's strong arm. This may be the hard way, but it is the best way. And that's the way Wurlitzer wants it. This is what's called the door trim line. Paralleling it is the cabinet trim line. This is modern mass production at its best. Along the door trim line are installed the selector trim casting, the side pilasters, the metal grill, grill plastics, record changer compartment window, and a number of other units composing the door assembly. Come to think of it, it's difficult to recall any object unless it be a bank vault, where the door is more important to the general scheme of things than it is on a Wurlitzer jukebox. The cabinet trim line is another center for the assembly of a host of parts that flow here from all sections of the plant. A 
Along this line, each unit acquires the decorative record changer compartment panel, the back door, the light shields, the trim castings, the speaker door, the locks, the lamps, the sockets, and many other functional and decorative features. Each one of these parts in a modern Willister contributes in its own way to either the eye appeal or the ear appeal of these instruments. It's interesting to note that the entire cabinet and door are metal framed for extra ruggedness. It's this skyscraper type of construction that has won Willitzer commercial phonographs their reputation for rendering long service. And if you'll pardon us for blowing our horn just one tiny toot, it's one of the reasons why Willitzer sells more commercial phonographs than all other manufacturers combined. Again, that ever-recurring job, inspection. Does it pass the technician's test? It must. And when it does, it's ready for final assembly. But hold on. To date, it's only a shell. Couldn't play a note. Into it must go myriad parts and sub-assemblies from the metalworking division. And that's where we're headed now. Every day, large quantities of brass, steel, and aluminum arrive at Wurlitzer's North Tonawanda plant. Immediately, they are tested for thickness, hardness, and chemical structure, and then placed in stock to meet the requirements of the metalworking division. Here's a look-see into that division. What a beehive of activity with beehive drone magnified a couple of million times. Hard to realize that the end result of all this noise is music. Sweet music, jazz music, jive music, swing music, good music. Providing fun for folks of all ages. But getting back to the raw materials, they must first be cut and formed to required shapes and sizes, and often to tolerances as close as five ten thousandths of an inch. In metalworking, as in woodworking, Willitzer has set its standards of quality, and believe me, they're sky high. The men not only check parts for the phonograph, they check the gauges, which are used to check the parts. But in metalworking, as in woodworking, you will find some operations best done by hand. Tool making and die sinking, for example, are still largely a craftsmanship business with human brain and the human hand coordinating. Yet, occasionally, the toolmaker's craftsmanship must extend into realms of accuracy beyond the power of the craftsman. Ten thousand dollars for this jig borer. It must be mounted in concrete to dead level accuracy. It may not bore three holes an hour, but the millionth inch accuracy of those few holes assures the accuracy of hundreds of thousands of phonograph parts. Dies. Over half a million dollars worth are used to produce the current model Wurlitzer phonograph. Yes, it takes money as well as men and machines to win and hold Wurlitzer leadership. While we're here, let's look around and see what makes this division tick. Here's a battery of automatics. They're knocking out small parts, nuts, bolts, bushings, that go into a phonograph. You'd hardly notice them, but unless they're right, the phonograph would not play. Let's look closely at one of these automatics. It takes a bar of metal and feeds it, 
it, drills it, recesses it, taps it, chamfers it, and cuts it off. Turret lathes, batteries of them, turning out more and more Wurlitzer parts. With modern equipment like this, Wurlitzer is independent of outside sources of supply. And with equipment of this kind, Wurlitzer has consistently turned out phonographs that have been the envy of the industry. Phonographs that get and hold the best locations because their music appeals most to the public. Phonographs that stand a gap in service and require less service because they are first expertly engineered and next precision built by modern methods to the original specifications. Whether it's applying felt-like covering to a phonograph record tray from a bare disc to a finished disc in one operation, or heat treating the latest alloys by new heat treat techniques, or plating with zinc and copper for protection, or with bright nickel, chromium and cadmium for appearance, Willitzer has the experience, the equipment, the facilities, and the men to do the job. And now before we leave metalworking, here's something as new as television. Heliarc welding, a fast, dependable method of joining metals never before possible to weld. It utilizes intense heat generated by high frequency electric current and argon gas. It produces in a split second a joint without distorting or destroying the surrounding metal. Heliarc welding is used in constructing the front door on Willitzer phonographs and is one more proof that in metalworking, as in woodworking, Willitzer sets the pace of progress. So far, you've seen a cabinet made. We've given you a quick look at the metalworking division and what its work involves. But the work that goes into a Wurlitzer is far from finished. Another whole division now comes into play. Assembly. Here you'll see something of what goes into a Wurlitzer cabinet before it becomes a phonograph. In assembly, Wurlitzer inspection increases vigilance. This specially built test set examines the heart and blood pressure of a transformer. Matter of fact, Willitzer maintains its own test equipment laboratory. Here, new types of test equipment are devised. And where specialized equipment can't be purchased outside, are built right here in this special test equipment laboratory. And now, getting back to assembly. These girls are wiring, soldering, and riveting thousands and thousands of small parts that become amplifiers, volume controls, and other units of the electrical circuit. Maybe you don't think it takes plenty of training to know your way around this maze of wires, or to understand the intricate wiring diagrams from which these people work. Looks almost hopeless, but never fear, everything will come out all right. It's planned that way in advance, by design and engineering. All of the Willitzer phonographs you have seen are basically designed to handle auxiliary equipment, of which wall boxes like these are typical. They are built, as are auxiliary speakers, right here in this plant. Together they compose what Willitzer calls engineered music systems. Their purpose? To make Wurlitzer music more accessible, more enjoyable wherever you go. 
here's one boy who puts money into a Wurlitzer all day long and gets it back again. It's another example of Wurlitzer inspection. This chap is testing with actual coins, the coin actuated mechanism of a wall box. Will it operate quickly, accurately? Will it stay in hard use? It's built to, and it will. Or it will never pass this boy, and he's a tough customer to please. What's this? It's the record changer production line. This is the device that produces the particular records you indicate you want played when you deposit your coin. Like everything else on a Wurlitzer, it's built for heavy duty, maximum service, and the production of mighty fine music. Want proof? Then look at this. There are 24 record trays on this stack. The space washers that operate these trays must be accurate to one ten thousandth of an inch. It takes ten separate finishing operations to mill them to that accuracy. The slightest error on one washer, and the phonograph could not play. But some 300,000 Wurlitzers are playing every day. Again, a tribute to the accuracy and quality of Wurlitzer engineering and production. And now we're coming to the end result. Those piles of lumber and steel and plastics, those days and weeks and months of designing and engineering, here they culminate in a crescendo of color, action and glorious music, a finished Wurlitzer phonograph. What, another inspection? This one's called the life test. It's a whole series of inspections, checkups, run-ins, with one aim. Is this instrument up to Wurlitzer's standards of quality? Is it worthy of bearing the name that means music to millions? These tests and one more tell the story. And that one more is tone. In these soundproof rooms, inspectors whose most important asset is their ears, listen to every Wurlitzer. Listen for tone distortion. Listen and judge. Listen and adjust. Listen for that clarity, that sparkle, that living, breathing tone that is Wurlitzer music. That's musical fun for everyone. Pack it, ship it, Send it on its way with the thousands before it and thousands to come to entertain America. And now before we give you a little look-see at another Wurlitzer product, let's take a minute or two to talk about Wurlitzer workers. They find this a pleasant plant in which to work for a great many reasons. You've already seen some of those reasons. Here are some more. Take the restroom. They're a long way from the dank, dingy, disinfectant-laden dungeons that used to be. Here at Wurlitzer, they're clean, spacious, light, modern in every respect. Take the food facilities. A varied menu of appetizing, nourishing food is available to employees and brought directly to them by ingenious food wagons. They may eat at their machines or benches in allotted lunch areas, or when the weather's right, they can eat out of doors on the spacious lawns that surround the plant. Twice daily, a siren signals a 10-minute rest period, when a chap can have himself a smoke or a coke, or when a gal can make with the makeup or swap some girlish gossip. It all makes for good industrial relations. And so do the first aid and safety departments. Here, a safety committee, composed of labor and management representatives, meet regularly in the interests of accident prevention. And here, in the first aid department, employees who do suffer illness or accident 
are attended by a staff of registered nurses. In some here at Wurlitzer, good working conditions are provided by a company ever mindful that its workers are human beings. In return, the men and women of Wurlitzer maintain the traditional American idea of making an honest effort for a just reward. The Wurlitzer Electronic Organ, hailed as music's richest voice, another product produced in this plant. Embracing fine Wurlitzer craftsmanship, this instrument is designed for churches, mortuaries, institutions, and homes. Occupying no more room than a small grand piano, it reproduces inspiring majestic music long associated with the range, volume, and tonal perfection of great pipe organs. This is the Willitzer organ pre-amplifier under test. Look at the complicated electrical circuits in that little box. Willitzer's precision methods and quality control are just as evident here as they are in phonograph production. Expert craftsmen install the reeds. The Willitzer organ achieves its superb tonal beauty by using free reeds, not as a direct source of tone, but as a source of harmonic structure. These harmonics are then selected, modified, and translated electronically into audible organ tones. Now the keys are installed. And here is the Willitzer organ in all its majesty. Another tribute to Willitzer quality. And now, a concluding word from Vice President and Plant Manager, Carl Johnson. No visit to Willitzer would be complete without a word from two other men. I'm going to call on one of them now, E.R. Wurgler, our general sales manager. Music is a universal language, spoken and understood by all people of all races, creeds, and ages. Music is our business. We are America's largest and best known producer of jukeboxes. Through our DeKalb and our plant, we're also the nation's largest manufacturer our pianos and accordions sold under one name. Truly, Wurlitzer is a name that means music to millions. And now a word from our Vice President and Director of Sales, Mike Hammerman. Yes, Wurlitzer means music to millions. And we aim to keep it that way, to maintain our leadership by the same means with which we want it. Close adherence to the highest possible quality standards. It's been a pleasure through this film to have you visit our North Tonawanda plant and show you what goes into our products in the way of cost, care, craftsmanship, and quality. Whether it be a Wurlitzer piano or an accordion in your home, a Wurlitzer organ in your church, or a Wurlitzer phonograph in your favorite refreshment center, it will be the type and kind of music it should be at its best. <laughs>